So today on Bridges, we're going to talk about what happens at that point in life where you just wonder, so what's next? We'll be right back with that. Today on Bridges, we are going to focus on, so what's next? We've all been there. We don't like where we are, but we need to know what's next. Joining me to help me talk about that is pastor and author Adonis Lindsay. And Adonis, good to have you back. Hey, Monica, it's always good to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me back. Yeah, I'm glad to have you because I think that you can help all of us. We have all been <laughs> at a place, you know, where what we're doing doesn't work or yeah. we're tired of it. Yeah. And we say, so what's next? Exactly. So what's next? Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's, it's figuring out where you are yeah. right now, especially when you know there's something more mm -hmm. and you've got that feeling on the inside that, man, I, I should be doing more or my life is unfulfilled right now. Mm -hmm. You know there's something out there, but you've got to figure out where you are right now. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's what I call that reality check. Yeah. And a lot of us need that every now and then in our lives where we look in the mirror when nobody else is around, yep. nobody is around to encourage us, nobody is around to tell us anything, but we can look at ourselves because nobody knows you better than That's right. you, okay? <laughs> Nobody yes. knows that. And so when you look at yourself in the mirror and you have that heart-to-heart -heart talk where you're able to challenge yourself about where you are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was talking to a young man a while back, and this is, this is just an amazing story of a young man, and he found himself having that reality check. Monica. He knew all of his life that God had a plan for his life. I mean, that had been spoken over him. His parents were thriving in, in church ministry, but wow. for some reason, he was stuck, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I remember he called me on the phone and told me, he said, man, I've really had a heart to heart with myself. And he looked at himself in the mirror mm -hmm. and he challenged himself and he did a flashback of his life. And he had that reality talk. He looked at himself <laughs> and he said, it was so funny. He said, he said, here you are, you have three kids, you're not married to their mothers, you're couch surfing from house to house to house of your friends, you're doing activities that are not setting you up to be the father yes. that these kids need in yes. their life. And he had that gut-wrenching heart check. But that's good because that's in an environment where you're talking to yourself. Mm -hmm. And he had that moment, and from that moment on, he told himself, you can do better than this. That's right. But and you can never do better until you realize where you are. Yeah. And he realized he needed to make some changes in his life if he was going to be that father that his kids needed him to be. And you know, Adonis, I think that's one of the key things and one of the things I love so much about the book Next. You know, when we start focusing on where we are, yeah. then it's no longer everybody else's fault. Exactly. Not to say that other people maybe haven't made some mistakes or yes. we haven't had some deficiencies yes. or disadvantages. But it's got to come down to, if I want to know what's next, we have to be honest about where we are. And that may not be an easy conversation, yeah. but it's necessary. It's, it's, yeah. And for him, I mean, I can't imagine to be couch surfing. <laughs> exactly. Three kids have that moment. I'm not married to any of their yeah. moms. But... Thank God, there's a next. There's a next. And that's that moment <laughs> he that he had. He didn't have to stay there. Yeah, he looked at his life. He was in his 20s. Still had a lot of life in front yeah. of him. And, and just, we need those. And thank God for those reality checks that yeah. bring us to a moment that says, you know what? No matter what was spoken over your life, you know, many people had prophesied over <laughs> him and, and, and said that God's going right. to use you to do uh -huh. this. At the end of the day, you still have to get involved with God's plan for your life. God's mm -hmm. not going to wave a magic wand and no. all of a sudden, wow, you're the person that God wants you to be. No, you've got to get involved with this plan. That's right. And a lot of times that is saying to yourself, there are some things that I need to change. And I tell people all the time, take responsibility yes. for where you are, take action for where you want to be. Amen. And that's going to empower you to look at your situation. And like you said, you're not going to blame shift. You're not going to blame anybody. Right. You're not going to blame your parents. You're not going to blame society. Come on. That's right. You're not going to blame culture. No, because all those things right are there. Here. But if it, we look at us, exactly. but if we want to give that all the power, we will never. We'll never get, get ahead of life. Next, we'll never go is. forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so when he looked at himself and he took responsibility, I love that for a young 20 something year old That's man right. to take responsibility and said, the life I'm living right now 
is because I chose to live That's this. That's right. Okay? It's, it's that simple. <laughs> and say, so, you know what? There's a better plan. There's a better life for me. And I love mm -hmm. that because immediately he started getting back into church. Mm -hmm. uh, he called me up and he said, man, I got to connect with some, some, some better people. Yeah. He said, I'm thankful for the friends I have, but they're still doing what I don't want to do anymore. So right. his first thing was, okay, what's next? I got to connect with That's some right. people <laughs> that, are, that are good for me, people that are going to encourage me, people that are going to show me a life that, that is close to the life that I want to lead and mm -hmm. live. And so he started connecting with the right people, got more back involved in church, uh, got a job, uh, a real job this time. Yay! You know, that's the deal. It's like, real jobs are and, good people. And I love that because because <laughs> he was filling out applications. Yeah. And here's the deal. A lot of people, Monica, you know, they come to you and say, you know, I want a job. And it's like, have you filled out an application? Right. Because that is a practical next step yes, that is. you need to be doing. Yes, have you is. gone online and mm -hmm. researched? Have, uh -huh. you, have you at least Googled something mm -hmm. that's in the arena mm -hmm. that, that you want to be involved in? Yeah. And so he started filling out these applications. I loved, I was able to watch his process because the process of reaching your next doesn't happen overnight. And we have to understand that mm -hmm. once again, there's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be slammed doors in our face. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to realize that God is for us and we've got to keep walking forward because as I watched his his process you know he filled in several applications nothing came through mm -hmm. he ended up finally getting one job it wasn't his a job that he right. had in mind but he said you know what this is going to allow me to take care of my children and be the father that I need to be and he started doing that for a while and then something else opened up for him and it was so interesting because he had a uh, just a knack, uh, uh, just a, uh, I call it just an ability, supernatural ability. He was a swimmer. He loved to swim. Mm -hmm. And that was something that, man, you didn't even have to force him to do. <laughs> and so what happened, somebody from, uh, I think it was uh, one of the local wise in town, uh, uh, saw him one day and said, hey, man, I, I know you like to swim. And so he was a lifeguard. And so he was there doing that. And so step by step, That's right. he was taking whatever he needed to do to get to the place that God wanted him to yeah. be. So I love that process. But once again, it started with him realizing what I'm doing right now is not going to get me any closer That's right. to where I want to be. So realize where you are in the moment. Right. And then realize you don't have to stay there. That's right. So next can't happen until we know where we are. Yes. And that then we would be willing to stop procrastinating. Oh, that is so huge. I can't tell you how many people... Yeah. You know, uh, even with writing this book, you know, it's, this, is, this is my... This is my <laughs> you can speak to that. Yes, right? <laughs> yes. This is, a, this is the second book I've, I've written. And I come across so many people when they hear that I've written another book uh, that they always... It's the same song and dance. Man, I've got a book that I've been wanting to write for years, okay? <laughs> and the same people are telling me this year after year after year. Mm -hmm. And I look at them and say, well, what is stopping you from writing the book, you know? And that's that small thing called right. procrastination. Right. We put it off. And when I get to it next week, I'll get to it next year. And before long, we talk ourselves out of mm -hmm. taking that first initial step that will gain momentum in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, the hardest thing is taking that first step. You know that's right. Okay, that is it. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think it's Don Shula who says the, the start is what stops most people. You got that right. And that is so mm -hmm. key. And it's mm -hmm. like, I tell people, just do it. Just step out there and do it. Don't worry about trying to be perfect. You know, when, when me and my wife wrote off. Everybody yes, knows we're not. We're not. Hello. You know, let, let me free you of that right now. You are not perfect, okay? Be free yes. of that. You're yes. not perfect. And so many people, uh, they procrastinate because they're trying to paint that perfect picture of what that's going to be. Some people procrastinate because they fear right. of what other people are going to think. They fear they're going to step out and fail. Mm -hmm. We've got to get over that. I you agree. Know? While they're procrastinating, people are in the game making mistakes, but they're working their way through well, and they're going on to live their dream. And procrastinators are still stuck on the bench mm -hmm. watching everybody else yeah. play the game. Because that's one of the things you talk about in the book is winning over procrastination. Yes. You're talking about your book. And I can't tell you, Adonis, how many people I meet with year after year who want to do TV. Yeah. And asked me the same question we <laughs> talked about five years ago and four years ago and ten years ago. And it's like, okay, you want it to be perfect, but the yeah. thing is, just start. Just start. It, everybody starts with an idea. Exactly. And, you know, as far as the naysayers, what I try to tell myself is just go on ahead and let them do it. I just accept that people have <laughs> negative things to I say. I just accept that. Absolutely. That people are going to say, well, Monica, why did you do that? And it's like, well, they have the benefit 
of seeing the whole thing. I started yeah. with just the idea. Exactly. So anybody that's really doing things, I think we ought to count on criticism. Yes, oh, absolutely. And do it absolutely. anyway. Yeah, yeah, don't let that stop you. Something yes. that freed me, <clears throat> excuse me, even writing, you know, you're always wondering and thinking about, okay, am I gonna get bad reviews? Exactly. And this? I'll put that out there for the whole world to see mm -hmm. and say something negative about it. I remember reading this one guy who was an author. He said, he said, you know, you're gonna have critics out there. People are gonna say good stuff about you. Right. They're gonna say bad stuff about you. He said, the only thing you have to make sure you worry about is make sure your name is spelled correctly. Exactly. And when I saw that, that just kind of freed me up. Yeah. You know, and it just make sure your name is spelled That's right. right. That's all you have to worry about. And so I tell people, start where you are with what you have. Just like you mentioned, the people are coming to you saying, you know what, I'm, I've been thinking about getting in TV. Sure. Well, show me something you filmed with your iPhone, with your yeah, camera. Exactly. Just, mm -hmm. man, put a camcorder. Do something that gets the ball rolling and gets momentum going in your life because a lot of people, they procrastinate and they wait because they've got everything figured out. And by then, somebody else is doing their dream. That's right. Well, you know, even the Bible says if you wait until all the conditions are right, you won't do anything. You won't do it. Absolutely. They're, they're never all right. Yeah. Like, there's <laughs> never a perfect time. Oh, never. And, and none of us, you know, dreams are good. We can, you know, be afraid to dream. But, you know, we need to count on when we're following that dream yeah. that mistakes will happen. Yeah. There will be critics. Yeah. We'll be tempted to quit. Yeah. When we bump up against so what's next, we just need to count on that, I think. Yeah, you know, I tell people all the time, too, because a lot of people, you know, when a door of opportunity slam mm. in their face and yeah. things like that, so they're thinking about that, and so they're back on the bench and thinking, do I yeah. even get up and start again mm -hmm. or whatever it is because, you know, and so procrastination sets in. Yeah. But I tell people not every door is supposed to open. That's right. Okay? <laughs> and sometimes we look at it like it's rejection, but maybe mm -hmm. that's pr protection. God is seeing through that door, and he knows that's going to veer you off off course of what he has for That's you. That's right. And so you just got to look at it like that and not, you know, don't throw in the towel. Listen, there's a lot of success stories. I tell people this, Monica, and this is something that I believe if everybody can grab a hold mm -hmm. of, you can never really be in awe of someone's success until you are fully aware of the process it took to get you them there. You know, That's right. And I tell people, when you find somebody successful, ask them to tell you their pre-success story. <laughs> because that's the one they want to tell you. Because you look at them and think they hung the moon and they've made no mistakes. But I guarantee you, they'll take an hour out of their time and tell you about their pre-success story, where they started from, all the trouble they went through, all the slam doors, all the, all the mistakes, all the failures, and they kept moving forward. That's the story you need to hear from successful people. Right. And, you know, to realize, too, that sometimes that rejection, it is God's protecting yes. us. You know, also, I think, Adonis, we need to realize when we say, so what's next? We've got to grow in our ability to handle adversity and perseverance. Oh, and shut doors helps us to do that and yes. like nothing else. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, sometimes I think with God, we think everything is going to be handed to us on a silver platter. I don't know where we get that from because it's not in the Bible. No, it's not. No. So I don't know uh -uh. where that, that philosophy <clears throat> came from. But if it's a big dream, it's going to come with big adversity. That's right. We have to we understand gotta. that. But all the while, I believe there's strength in the struggle. Amen. Okay? You grow, you mature in the struggle, in the process. That's and right. so you've got to just welcome those slam doors with joy That's and right. sit there and look at it. I tell people, if the door is slammed, don't sit there and talk to the door. It's not going to open. It's right. shut. Move on to the next one. That's right. And so understand so that God's next? in control. So what's next? So you say, okay, God, it didn't work out here. So there's something else somewhere that it's going to work out for me. So keep moving forward That's because right. the moment you stop, momentum stops, your, your energy stops. And so you've just got to keep the momentum going, keep moving forward and understand that if God be with you, and God before you, who can be against you? And understand that there's a next out there for you. There's a dream. And I encourage people, start dreaming again. That's right. It's Grab important. that dream off the shelf. Dust it off. Because there's a lot of people, Monica, still dreaming, but they're afraid to voice it. They're afraid to take that step. This is where, just like my, uh, the young man I was talking to, he realized where he was, and then he started dreaming again. Yeah. He started dreaming about being in ministry that had been spoken over his life uh, from since he was a little kid. And so you've got to start dreaming again and realize that those dreams are attainable and you're going to continue to take step by step by step because you know deep down inside there's a whole lot more for you. So yes. keep following that feeling and know that your next days will be your best and, days. And they will be. Thank yes. you so much for coming, for sharing. Up next is Jennifer McGill and her true life story about So What's Next.
If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. So if you are just joining us today on Bridges, we are talking about So What's Next? And my guest is Jennifer McGill. And Jennifer, I'm glad to have you. Thank you so much. Awesome to be here. Well, I'm really glad to meet you and, and talk with you. We've been talking with Adonis about, you know, So What's Next? And you have, as a part of many of your stories, <laughs> a what, So What's Next story, because you were kind of thinking life and career paths would go one way, and it went another. Tell us about that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I started very young thinking I knew exactly what my whole trajectory in life was going to be. <laughs> I was 10 years old when I started my career professionally. 10 years 10 old? 10 years old. Well, what I, were you doing at 10? Oh, you know, a lot. But I would say <laughs> the professional part was I was a Mouseketeer okay. on the Disney Channel's new Mickey Mouse Club. Mm -hmm. So I was hired to sing, dance, act, um, which sounds really fun. Oh, it sounds so it's fun. And fun. you're like 10 years Ooh, old. Like, and I get to go to Disney World yeah. and I get to like live yeah. in Disney World. And yeah. I'd never been there before. I'd never been able to take a vacation there. So whole new world for me coming from a very small town in Texas. And yes, it was fun to sing, dance, and act, but there was a lot of professionalism involved, knowing your lines, knowing where to look, which camera in order. We had about five that we had mm. to work with, changing lines, blocking, a lot of professional responsibilities, sure. but still needing to be my age in the moment on camera. You were 10 years old. Trying yeah. to process that yeah. was a lot. But beyond that, I already knew through that very successful experience that I was going to sing and dance and act and just keep getting bigger and bigger in that career. That's what I knew was going to happen. Now, well, because it sounds like that would be it. <laughs> I mean, you, would think, you would think, like, what other child had as much opportunity as I had mm -hmm. to have that kind of trajectory? And I will tell you that a lot of children from that show did wind up being celebrities. Mm -hmm. We had Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Ryan Gosling, Carrie Russell, Joey Fatone, J.C. Chazay, and then there's me. <sighs> but I did not achieve the celebrity in my tweens, teens, and 20s like those individuals did, and that's where it caused a big problem mm. in my identity. I had a big roadblock, and so fast forwarding through all of my 20s, I had about six years of what is going on with my life, being bitter, comparing myself to everyone, a whole big jealousy did situation. Did you really? I did. I did, I was not satisfied with my talent and how I looked mm -hmm. and what I could give to the world because I was letting win all the stuff that the world talks about. Why aren't you famous? You can do that, mm -hmm. you sound like this, you look like this, why aren't you? Mm -hmm. And I was really suffering from the curse of fame. Yeah. I was suffering from a big firework in the beginning of my life and then just the fallout. Yeah. Right? And I would think that that's a difficult, it's like a really difficult place because you were 10. Yes. You know, so it's you just think it's going to grow and be bigger and be bigger and be bigger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most people are more late bloomers. Correct. So you kind of had that opposite course of everybody. So all those famous people you named, you're looking at them and you're thinking, that should be me. Why can't I be a part of that too? Mm -hmm. Why can't I do that? When I was in college, that's when all of them were getting really famous. That was the bubble gum pop movement yeah. and I was really left behind and mm -hmm. so with all that being said you know I I also really at the core of it was having a Jesus crisis mm -hmm. because I was letting the world have a much louder voice in yeah. who I was and what my purpose was mm -hmm. than than he was yeah. he so was how being... how did you get yourself to a better place where you were able to say okay I'm Jennifer McGill so what's next <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jennifer McGill. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I really, I really had isolated myself to the point when I was 30 that I had made so many choices without letting Jesus be a part of that. You know, mm -hmm. I, I came from a church background and I had known him my entire life, as far back as I could remember. But I had slipped through the cracks of the practical application of the Jesus relationship. Mm -hmm. And I know everyone's got a different kind of seasoning of relationship. I mean, he speaks to us all so individually. But I wasn't even in that realm of trying to hear that. And so I was really lost. And so at 30, that was my getting on my knees, give it all back to him, rededicating my life to him, because nothing that I had produced, none of the fruits of my labor or my mistakes got me anywhere satisfactory. Mm -hmm. I was so just lost and done. Mm -hmm. So I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I have made all these choices without you. I am completely 
just done. I am, I am dead inside. I am nothing that you have created me to be. None of the purposes that you have given me are being activated right now. Mm -hmm. I need you to take it back. I need you to take all my life back and just let me walk in your path, whatever that looks like. So I literally let, I, I literally let go of any quest for fame, any quest for aesthetic beauty or validation, any kind of relationship stuff, any kind of accolades or labeling. And I said, just whatever you want to do, if you want me to do it, let me do it. Over the course of the next few years, I mean, now I'm 38, <laughs> so over, I guess for about eight years, um, for a few years now since I've been in Nashville, I have really seen how he has given me every single thing back mm -hmm. that at the heart of it was what I was truly made to do, the singing, and the, even, even dancing, because I'm kind of a Jesus partier on stage when I worship lead. <laughs> I lead worship and I'm jumping and I'm sweating. So even all of that, like everything I do, dancing for him, singing for him, speaking for him, how I encourage others in the written word or, or speak to people, just, just friend to friend. Everything I do now is sprinkled with that Jesus perspective of you are enough, you have a purpose, let me tell you about my story. The identity that you're looking for, especially in Nashville in the music business, I can give tween, mostly tween girl recording artists a new perspective of, it's good to shoot for this career stuff, right. but remember what the center of you needs to be, remember, yeah. because of what happened to me. Yeah. So everything I do now, which is all the stuff I first loved, being in front of the camera, being on a platform, being able to speak to people, um, being able to present and be an artist, all of that is now God centered mm -hmm. and I am so much happier yeah. than my amazing time on the Mickey Mouse Club. Right. But it's like, you know, it's like you had that Mickey Mouse Club and you had that vision of, well, this is what I'm good at. This is what I need to be doing. And then that sort of got kind of pulled by the world by what you saw other people do. But God in his graciousness kind of just let time stop a little bit for you and bring you to that place so that your so what's next moment only came when you gave it all to Christ. That's right, he really took care of me in my darkest moments because it could have been so much worse. And what I really love is, what my next is, is really the complete circle. It's the completion of what I was born to do, but in the through the refining fire, <laughs> now I'm actually doing it um, obviously for God, yes. but so genuinely through him, yeah. you know, Amen. with no desire to do it outside of his will anymore. Mm -hmm. And it makes everything so, yeah. so worry free, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah. There's really not a lot of fear in my work anymore. There's not a lot of fear in my choices because I'm always bringing him into the middle of it and saying, all right, well, maybe I'm not supposed to make that decision today. Right. This, this life of artistry or pop music, any kind of music business, any kind of recording business, any kind of speaking and traveling, there can be a lot of decisions that need to be made right away. Yeah. And so, I mean, it can be very stressful, but I, I truly believe that because I know what it could have been like without him, there's, there's really no comparison to the stress factor in all of the amazing things I get to do now through him and all the amazing things I, all the ways that I can help other people now. Yeah. That is so much more of a level up than what I was thinking of doing, just being famous and having a, a well, name Well, because that would have been all about you. Yes. And you would have always had the stress <laughs> and the pressure of performance yes. and looking good and sounding good according to the world. That's right. You'd have already had that, all those, you know, people are so judgmental and so critical of anybody who's out there in, in famous. You know, it looks wonderful, mm -hmm. but I often think that it really can't be behind the scenes. It can't be mm -hmm. all, you know, that we imagine it to be. It is not as wonderful yeah. as we would imagine it to be. <clears throat> um, I know for me, God knew I could not handle what I wanted in my 20s. Because no person should, no, we're not built to handle all of that. No, yeah. I had such body dysmorphia. Mm -hmm. I had such a question about my aesthetic. I would have mm -hmm. never survived managers and agents telling me to lose weight or change things about myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just the little bit that I experienced, I did have a recording contract mm -hmm. for a moment. And even just that little bit that I experienced, I just would have never survived. So yeah. he protected me from a lot of what I thought yeah. was the ultimate exactly. prize in this world. So it may be, Jennifer, that people are watching right now who, you know, imagine whatever it is in their career path, whatever they're good at, writer, singer, musician, could be anything, speaker, even being a lawyer, you know, all of those things, we have that and we have that talent and we have that drive, but you know, if God's not in it, what's it worth? That's right, there's, there's the, perspective of true biblical excellence. Yeah. 
that supersedes any number one, any salary increase, any title on, on your office. Yeah. Um, there is so much of a different perspective and a different satisfaction when you are checking in with God and Amen. letting him move you in your career, even in your studies, to get you to your career, mm -hmm. any of your financial planning, to be truly biblically excellent is a completely different definition than the world's view of excellence. Oh, absolutely, and different than, I think, as the world thinks about perfectionism in the, in the way that the world measures and the world weighs people. And that is a driving, compelling, compulsive mm -hmm. force that just runs us all in the wrong direction. It's so dangerous. Yeah, and w when I hear you even talking about working with tween girls, like my heart just gets happy because I think those poor girls are under so much pressure to look, to sound, to be a certain way. That's not even realistic for anybody. Like even, there are so few that can achieve it, but even those that do are chasing their own tail, so to speak, That's in right. order to make that happen. And they have available to them a lot of tricks, both in the recording industry, as well as uh, magazines and Photoshop. I, I mean, there's so much help <clears throat> so that, you know, we're even distancing our audiences, our tween audiences, even more from the actual reality of these already, you know, maybe beautiful people, of course, you know, they, yeah. they've got some, you know, some great <laughs> sure. raw talent going on. Sure. <laughs> but there's even more of a gap now from how do you get there yeah. if you're kind of down here and you want what they have, you yeah. know, um, and I'm super passionate about um, tween girls and how they feel about their bodies, but most especially the ones that are in the business that mm -hmm. I started at. And I remember, I mean, I grew up on camera 10 to 17. I went through all of puberty on camera and yeah. I was the tallest and the curviest and I just felt super awkward. And mm -hmm. just imagining that any teenager has even a smidge of that kind of issue or feeling magnified or just under a microscope in their high school or their middle school. I mean, I'm super passionate about their self-esteem and how they see themselves. Yeah. How do you help them see themselves in what would be a more God-honoring way? What I love to do, and through my job, I, I, am, a, I am the creative director of Lifetime Impact Group, mm -hmm. and we have put out a show called Bravehearted Girls, The Warrior Princess Quest. And there are some great shows that talk about you are beautiful inside and out, and we do include that theme, but we go deeper biblically as far as we bring out the, the ways of the heart, what God says in the Bible about how you're beautiful in the way that you love God, love yourself, and love others. We also talk about the warrior side of you are to stand on a battlefield with God. You are to fight in this world for what you believe in mm -hmm. and to love others and love yourself and to love God. There's a strength that we are also made to exemplify. And we take them through in this two-hour two event through music and, and, and dancing and, and just all this biblical learning, all these really fun things. We talk about what the world says a princess is what the world says a warrior is, like maybe through the movies, and then we talk about what God's warrior princess is. And it's mm -hmm. basically putting Jesus in the center. If Jesus is the reason that you use your princess powers and you put on your warrior wardrobe, which is the armor of God, that is what makes you the most bold in your purpose. Amen. And so we actually take the aesthetic completely out of our show. Good for you. Past crowns and gowns you. and swords <laughs> and armor, you know, that, that are representative of those, those types of characters. Yeah. But we don't even talk about, all right, this is maybe how your hair should be, and this is, Good we just for don't you. even go there. Yeah, because it, we've got so much of that already. Sure. There's no they need for need, that. They don't need us to do that. And so we right. really focus on the beautiful strength yeah. that, that women are built to have. Amen. Um, and we start them at five years old. That's, that's amazing. So I think what we're saying here is that if we want, so what's next? It's Christ <laughs> first and center. That's right. Christ in every product that I put out, Christ mm -hmm. in every speech I give, mm -hmm. and in every coffee I have with every every friend, no that matter what. That is so awesome. Thank you so much for coming and for sharing today. I sure appreciate it. We're out of time. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you.